Here's to all the years ahead. This is Offstage and On the Air. I am your host for the afternoon, Nick Mayo, with my beautiful co-host, Nicole Shiro. Hello. And together, we are Nick Squared! And we are back with Something for Nothing Theater Company's production of Much Ado About Nothing. In the house, we've got Allison Dillon. Hello. Um, Catherine Grady. Hello. And Heidi Penix. Hello. So, um, Allison, you're the co-director. I am. Tell my, me what that means in this world. Uh, in this world, it means that my <laughs> other co-director, Rosalind Ferris. I was uh, like, I know, it's the lovely Rosalind. Yeah, the wonderful Rosalind, whose birthday was yesterday. Happy ah, birthday. birthday. So we've been friends for a long time, and I've always wanted to work on something together, and this opportunity presented itself, and we together Are the Wonder a, Twins. Yeah, directed a 10-person production of Much Ado About Nothing in Ramsey Park. Oh, I love that. And, yeah. and Catherine, Gra- Catherine Grady, you pay uh, Beatrice. Yes. Yes, I do. Wonderful. Yeah. And Heidi? I'm Benedict. Oh, uh, duh, of course. Yes. Like when I saw you, that's the first <laughs> thing I thought. I know, who wouldn't? <laughs> how, ex- <laughs> how exciting. Yes. Yeah. So um, talk a little bit, Allison. When this idea, when you and Rosalind, who also, look, can we just say her name is Rosalind? Um, one of my favorite plays, As You Like It. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, we you know, that's why I, Robert named her that. That's, that's why she's, she's named that. that. I have no doubt. Yes. Um, so talk a little bit about from idea to fruition, um, how this has come to be and, and the, uh, the challenges and delights of doing it in an outdoor space. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's kind of twofold. Um, one is we thought that Much Ado About Nothing would be a really great play for an outdoor space, especially in the fall, because um, it's a very comic play, but also has elements of tragedy, um, and it has these moments of darkness that work really well in outside October weather. Um, but we also like to think of it as a house party gone wrong. Uh-huh. Um, so we have, it, we have it set contemporarily. It's just a bunch, all of our cast hanging out in the park together um, and drinking Lone Star. Yeah. Um, and things going very wrong in the park. and I, Which happens when you drink Lone yeah, Star in I the think, park. I think if it's you're yeah, drinking Lone Star in the park all day, things might go wrong. <laughs> things go the wedding, wrong. Might <laughs> wedding might be um, ruined. Wedding <laughs> So that was, that was part of it. And then we also wanted to have some more uh, queer representation in classic romantic comedies. It's something that's very important to both of us. Uh, and so we regendered Benedict along with Dogberry and Virgis to have some more women on stage and to also have a lesbian couple play these classic romantic leads. And so, Leonata also is. Oh, Leonata. Oh, and Leonata. Right. And we, yeah, we have a Leonata instead of a Leonato. So what kind of challenges yeah. does that, did that propose in terms of, I mean, when I say challenges, I mean really opportunities um, <laughs> for, for you, Heidi, <laughs> as playing, playing Benedict. Um, I think... The, in terms of language, like just the, or does it all just kind of throw, go in there it, in the right it, way? Surprisingly, it, the, the play itself flows, flows really well. And mm-hmm. I think, um, a lot of the, the character of Benedict, it's, it's the, the traditional commitment phobe, which I think in, in Shakespeare's time can be associated a lot with the, the male, you know, mm-hmm. character, but in, in modern days, it's just as easy for a woman to be a commitment phobe as oh, yeah. it is for a man. So, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be as as gendered. And so the the play itself, we took out a lot, you know, the, the specific things about women being at fault and just instead have mm. it be a person who is really scared But Heidi, of being women hurt. are at fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that is true. Um, that is, they are... I mean, where have you been? They <laughs> are pretty much the demon I mean, force really? in the world. Shall I, mean, I use the word nasty? We, yeah. are, <laughs> we, are, we are the problems of the world. World. We, you know, I think we tried to tone that down, and it's funny because I have had friends who talk about like I hate, I hate the play much ado about nothing because you know as a as a woman it's it's a, it's a terribly misogynistic play, and so I think it's really a good thing to be able to have it be a play that a woman can see and not be like I feel terrible about myself. Well, in a lot of play. ways, just actually see the beauty of the piece and the mm-hmm, beauty of the exactly. language. So it's so similar to Taming of the Shrew, which I think has gorgeous language, right. but is um, off putting in a lot of ways. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That makes me. Really Really excited! Yeah. I just got really excited about coming to hear it in a different way and to invest in in that angle. I, Can you talk a little bit, Catherine, about about Beatrice and what that's like? Oh yeah, um, I just to add on to that about the the fact about like regendering not only Benedict yeah. but also uh, heroes uh, father into a mother. Oh, yeah, um, I think that it actually really changes the dynamic in terms of like what the play is even about. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. we've sort of talked about how much ado about nothing is generally like a classic like battle of the sexes, mm-hmm. and now when um, when Hero has been sort of uh, slandered and it's like post-wedding and it's all these women trying to figure out like what they're going to do, what the next step is. And then it's, you know, a mother confronting 
uh, the Claudio and the prince, and then it's, you know, a female Benedict confronting Claudio and the prince. Like, all of a sudden, you do get the sense of, like, women sort of standing up for themselves in this, like, environment where another woman has been slandered. I think it's it's really interesting. Mm. It's really changed the whole wow. the dynamic. Wow. Yeah. It makes you look at those plot, those, some, those, the, wow, that's yeah. great. And I also just want to add quickly that I feel like this regendering has actually changed Beatrice's character more Definitely. than Benedict. I feel like Benedict is still very Benedict's recognizably still Benedict. Benedict. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> But Beatrice has all of this language, especially at the beginning of the play, about not wanting a husband unless he is made mm-hmm. of some other metal than earth, right, and like right. not not wanting to get married uh-huh. to a man. And having Benedict be a woman, we can kind of take her at her word for that. She uh-huh. is not yeah, interested in marrying of, a man. Right. Definitely a lot. Um, there's a lot of winking. And there's a lot of know? it's a lot of winking <laughs> instead of yeah. That's, um, yeah, that's really exciting. It's, it's fun. It works well. Yeah. I know you guys have a scene prepared for us. Mm-hmm. Do you want to um, set this up, Allison, and tell us a little bit about what sure. our listeners are going to hear? So the background between uh, Beatrice and Benedict is that we have a, a sneaking suspicion that they've had some sort of romantic entanglement in the past uh, and haven't seen each other for a while. And this exchange happens the first time they meet again. So this is Something for Nothing Theater Company's production of Much Ado About Nothing. Allison Dillon, Catherine Grady, and Heidi Penix with a scene from Much Ado About Nothing. If Signora Leonata be her mother, she would not have her hat on her shoulders for all Messina is like her as she is. I wonder that you will still be talking, Signora Benedict. Nobody marks you. What? My dear lady disdain. Are you yet living? Is it possible disdain should die while she has such meat food to feed it as Signora Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat? But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. And I would, I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly, I love none. (laughs) A dear happiness to women. They would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God in my cold blood I am of your humor for that. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than someone swear they love me. God, keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other might scape a predestinate scratched face. Scratching could not make it worse, if it were such a face as yours were. Well, you are a rare parrot teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse had the speed of your tongue and so good a continuer. But keep your way in God's name, I have done. You always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. <laughs> Oh, I love how the I, I love that the what the language is how the new light it gets put on with that. That's wonderful. Thanks. It's kind That's, of why I love Shakespeare more because it, it was interesting when y'all were talking about you know how some of these plays do have like people like I don't like that it doesn't show women in a good light or Lisa has a real big problem with comedy of errors she doesn't like the violence in it and and yet. We're, when you're obsessed with Shakespeare and you understand right. his language, you're obsessed with it. Yes. And you can't go, oh, but it was the time. But yet when you look at it from these different angles, it is it is still brand new. Mm-hmm. And, right. and, it, and it makes you fall in love with Shakespeare even more going, man, he was on to yes, something. Right, like exactly. Even if he didn't know or even when he did, like... Mm-hmm. Or she did. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so so but, when do you so guys... So thank you. Thank you thank for... You. for for doing that more yeah. with, Absolutely. with his work. I completely agree. Thanks. What days of the week do you guys run? We run Thursday through Sunday at 7.30 every evening in Ramsey Park. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. And um, we just ran out of time, but we're so happy Thank that you. you that you came on and I'm excited about this production. Um, Your little trailer that you made is cool. Oh, oh, thank you very much. I watched it and I loved it. (laughs) Nice. So if our listeners want more information, um, they can find you guys on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, facebook Facebook.com backslash something for nothing theater. ER. But you know what? Even if you Google something for nothing theater with the right way, Ari, it still comes up. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for You're being You're interchangeable, with us. baby. <laughs> that was Something for Nothing Theater Company's production of Much Ado About Nothing, playing okay. now through November 5th at Ramsey Park. For more information, you can find them on Facebook, Something for Nothing Theater. We'll be right back. <laughs> 